one second here and we'll get started. Just waiting for a few more people to join. <clears throat> All right, there's some more people here start to trickle in. Good morning, Miami Dolphins fans. How are you today? The big day is here. Let me open up something on my computer here. So I have something. Sorry about that. Um, the big day is finally here. <laughs> you have the Miami Dolphins and the debut of Tua Tungavailoa, as I try to straighten this out. And, you know, should be an exciting day for the Miami Dolphins and you know this is a day we've all been waiting for it is a big day uh with Tua and his debut wow I don't even know where to start I guess the first things first is you know this move and this move to Tua does make the Miami Dolphins a relevant team in the NFL again and I know some people um, on social media and stuff, have been reaching out, going, "Well, you know, we got to play first. We got to find out if he's any good." And no, you <laughs> know, this has nothing to do with on the field play. This has all to do with a marketing standpoint, with where your franchise is at. You know, from just a relevancy standpoint. And we have an article up on our site from well, not an article. It's a video of Dan Levitard, the South Florida media personality and you know radio host on ESPN Radio. He was on with Rich Eisen uh, Friday, I believe, late last week, and just talking how the Miami Dolphins here for 20 years since the retirement of Dan Marino, you know, have been nothing. You know, they've had they've had a long list of guys, they've had a long list of players, they've had a long list of quarterbacks, but none of them have really been anything special. Yeah, some of them were even good, like Chad Pennington almost won the MVP in 2008, but overall, they've been a nothing. And now, with Tua... You know, this, you know, you're going to get, with him on your roster, it changes how your franchise is perceived. You know, you know, you look at things like Monday Night Football, Sunday Night Football. Miami's just not an attractive team to put on those games. Now they are. Whether he's any good or not, it, do, it, it doesn't matter. As long as he's on the field, it's a story. And it's a storyline for the league. It's a storyline for the organization. And you are an attractive franchise to you know, play, um, to be. And, you know, at all the pregame shows this morning, it's going to be Tua, Tua, Tua. Rams versus Miami isn't the best game of the day. Hell, you got Pittsburgh versus the Ravens. There's so many big games in the NFL this week. you got the Patriots versus the Bills. There's so many big games, but everyone's going to be talking about the Miami Dolphins this morning. And it's not because they're the best team. It's because they have the best storyline, and they're relevant again. And that's what Miami has been lacking. Now, when it comes to Tua and his first start today, you know, and I'm going to be diplomatic about this because none of us know if he's any good. We hope he's good. We think he'll be good. We don't know if he's any good. Here's what I'm going to say. I think this first start today, there's almost no middle ground. I think Tua is going to be really, really good or he's going to be really, really bad. And there's like no in between. What, however he plays today, hopefully we're praying it's really, really good. But we don't know, and if it's not really, really good, I don't think there's no, you know, I don't think he's going to have a whole hum day. It's either going to be a great day where he throws for 250, 260, 270, three touchdowns, no interceptions, or it's going to be an awful day where he throws for like 195, one touchdown, and three interceptions. It's just, it's going to be one extreme or the other. That's how I think this game will go today for him. No middle ground. I just have a feeling that's just... What we're in store for, let's hope, let's pray, it's the great game. Because however he plays today, fair or not, and we know in this league it's not fair, it won't be fair, you know, that's going to set the narrative for Tua Tungavailoa. If Tua Tungavailoa goes out there this Sunday afternoon at Hard Rock Stadium, and he stinks, I mean, if he is brutal, you know, that's going to set the narrative that that the Miami Dolphins made a mistake. They should have took Herbert. They should have traded all their picks to move up and get Joe Burrow. The Dolphins screwed up. They screwed up. It's not fair because it's just one game. But that's the narrative that we will see on ESPN and Fox Sports and, you know, the NFL Network and, you know, SI. It's just that's the world we live in. So, you know, and on the other hand, if he plays sensational, it's going to be, 
we told you he was the best quarterback last year until the hip injury. Cincinnati made a mistake. You know, the Chargers maybe should have traded up to get him. They screwed up. There's going to be that narrative. So that's just the way, that's just the world we live in. You know, in the lead up to the draft, the pre draft, um, Daniel, that video. Hold on one second. No. Um, you know, that's just the world we live in. In the lead up to the draft, I like Tua. I'm happy they took Tua, but I wasn't gaga over Tua. There were people who were gaga over Tua. Tom on our website, gaga. You know, it's popping champagne the night of the draft. I'm like, calm down. Um, and there's some other people, you know, in the media. Colin Cowherd, who I'm going to talk about in a bit, he was gaga over Tua. Best quarterback, got to take him, got to take him, got to take him. You know, there were people who were drooling over Tua. Me, if Miami ended up with Justin Herbert, I would have been just as happy. And that's not me saying that now in hindsight, after Herbert's look, you know, good in a few games. You can listen to our old podcasts that are archived from March, from April. I was saying the same thing then. The night, the night prior to the draft, I was saying, I want Miami to take, to take Tua. But if they end up with Herbert, I'm not going to sit here and go nuts because that's just the way I felt. So, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting because there are a lot of people that are gaga over him. And if he comes out in his first game and lays a stinker, you know, it's, you know, once again, that's going to be the narrative here. It, it doesn't mean he'll go on and have a bad career. It doesn't mean anything like that. It just means that, you know, this is the start of his time in the league. And, um, you know, it's, it's not off to a fast rip roaring start. So we'll see. Um, what else do we have here? I'm trying to think. Oh no, Colin Cowherd. You know he was a huge Tua supporter in the lead up here. Now, as of late last week, he's hedged his bet, so to speak, saying Tua he's not going to make it. He's too small. He's not mobile enough. And he did a total one eighty. You know, screw Colin Cowherd. It's and it's not even that he's he's necessarily wrong. It's not even that. What he's saying, you know, you can have a negative opinion on Tua. I don't care at the end of the day. But to be like eight, nine months of in his camp and then like the, on the eve of his first start to do a total 180 and change your opinion on him, that's just a BS move if there, there ever is one. You know, be all in or don't. Changing your opinion to sort of hedge your bet right before his first start is a joke in my opinion. That's why nobody takes him seriously really in the media landscape. Um, last thing here on Tua, this whole notion... Um, uh, this whole notion that, you know, they can't start him, uh, with Sam Darnold here, or not Sam Darnold, with Aaron Darnold, you know, first start going against the Rams. He's got Ramsey and Darnold. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Oh my God. Oh my God. Folks, we took this kid five overall. We can't sit him on the bench every time we face a good opponent with a good defender. So I, I just don't understand the logic of some people in the media and even some fans going, why are we starting him against the Rams? Look, if it's not the Rams, you're going to face other good teams this year. And, you know, in next year, in the year after, if he's a long-term answer, what are we supposed to do? Put him on the bench every time we face somebody who's a good defender? We're playing the Pittsburgh Steelers this week. Oh, my God, sit to I mean, you can't do that. That's what this league's about. You can't do that. You can't do that. I don't care that they're playing Aaron Darnold this week. Who gives a crap? Or they're playing Ramsey. Coach your own team. Coach your own team. Don't worry about what the other team's got. If you have confidence in your offensive line, confidence in your wide receivers, confidence in your game plan, I don't care who they're playing. And that's why, you know, some people in the media, I think they just talk to hear their own voice. I mean, they make no sense with some of this stuff. If they actually listen to what they say, yeah, two is going to go up against good defenders in the NFL. You can't put them on the bench in those games, okay? You can't play them certain weeks when you're playing crappy teams like the Jets and then put them on the bench when you're playing a tough team. It makes no sense. So all this notion that you can't play them against the Rams, why not? Why not? Let's see what he's got. Put him out there against the Rams. Maybe he falls on his face. Oh, well. He'll start next week against Arizona. Okay. So, it just makes no sense. Um, but let's look at the matchup this week with the Rams in Miami. I think, um, you know, matchup-wise, let's start with offense. If I'm the Dolphins, look, you put the kid in a quarterback. Now, don't call a wimpy, you know, don't call a wimpy game. Okay. You put this kid out there. You have to attack, attack, attack. And, I, you know, I expect them to throw the ball, throw the ball down the field and try to make some plays. Parker versus Ramsey is a big-time matchup. Those are two elite guys. 
Parker, you know, one of the better wide receivers in the league. Ramsey might be the best cornerback in the league, one of the best, however you want to rank them. They're in the conversation at their spots. So, you know, Parker's got to have a nice day. And the other wide receivers, if Parker is kind of shut down or slowed down by Ramsey, they got to step up. Guys like Grant, step up, make a play. Grant has done nothing this year. Step up, make a play. Preston Williams has come on of late. He's going to have to continue to play well. You know, and maybe we get something out of Isaiah Ford, who's been quiet. Tight ends, they must be used as well. So, you know, the offensive weapons have to step up here and make some plays. Because Parker might be, I don't want to say shut down, but he might be slowed down this game with Ramsey. Ramsey's very good, and we have to acknowledge that. So other weapons in the passing game must get open. Um, in the running game, I expect to see more of the same from Miles Gaskin. Uh, Jordan Howard, probably another healthy scratch. He can go sit in the bench, eat more hot dogs, because he's he's worthless. Uh, Matt Breida, hopefully we get a little more out of him. He's been a big disappointment this year overall. So there's that. On defense, the Rams got very good wide receivers. Okay, we have to acknowledge that they got very good wide receivers. Howard and Jones, this is why we pay them. You know, slow them down, shut them down. Because if that happens, then hopefully, as we've seen the past few games, let the pass rush um, let the pass rush get after the quarterback. So we're hoping we're hoping for that. Jones and Howard are really going to be key in this game because the Rams are deep at wide receiver. They got a talented group of wide receivers. If they can slow that down and slow down the Rams' passing game, make them more one dimensional, gives Miami a better chance. So that'll be an interesting matchup to watch. Now remember, last time. Brian Flores here played the Rams, was in the Super Bowl, and he shut that offense down. Now, it's not the same offense. Um, Rams are told they got some new pieces. They've lost some pieces. Um, so Flores knows how to coach against this Rams offense, and he did it very well with the Patriots. But that was a while ago. So, and plus, it's not the same team either. Um, I mean, that was with Miami. So we'll see what goes on there. But, you know, offense, don't call a wimpy game. Just because you have a new quarterback, call an aggressive offensive game. Call the same game you would call with Fitzpatrick, essentially, even though Fitzpatrick's not on the field. And on the other side of the ball, just get after it with the pass rush. Get after it with the pass rush. Now, I want to talk about a few things here because, um, you know, as we sort of move forward um, here, we are, you've got the Miami Dolphins are 3-3. Three and three. We're, They already had their bye. They are at week, um, we're at week, what, eight of the NFL season and, you know, it's time here to start thinking. Hold on, I moved my camera for a bit. It's time to start thinking about the playoffs. Because, you know, you got the Miami Dolphins. They're, they're in the mix here for the playoffs. But you look at the AFC, and there's not, you know, the AFC is not great. But there's a lot of teams here in the mix for that final wild card spot. And I say final because two of the wild card spots, in my opinion, are, are already locked up. So... Let's look around the AFC real quick here. You got, in the AFC East, you know, I'm not saying it's impossible for Miami to catch the Bills. I'm saying it's probably unlikely. So if you pencil in the Bills as the winner of the AFC East, in the AFC North, let's go to the South. You got the Titans. They're a lock there. And out West, you got the Chiefs. So they're a lock. Now, in the AFC North is where it gets interesting. You have, you have the... Uh, Ravens and Pittsburgh. One of them will win the division. Let's just say, for example, it's Pittsburgh. That means the Ravens are a lock for a playoff spot. And so are the Browns. The Browns are a lock. And here's why the Browns are a lock. They right now have five wins. They have five wins on this NFL season. They are five and two. And I'm going to go through their schedule here real quick. And I'm gonna, and here's why they're a lock. At five wins, they are home against the Raiders today. Evenly matched game. I think the Browns should win. If they don't, they're still okay. Okay, so Raiders, home against Houston, that's a win. Now you're at six wins. Home against the Eagles, now you're at seven. Jacksonville's eight wins. Giants, nine wins. Jets, ten. And that's with the Raiders as a toss-up um, game. And, you know, they still have some other games where they could win. They're home against Pittsburgh, and they're home against the Ravens. If they ever split those two, they're going to be at 11-12 wins. You know, lickety split. And they're, you know... They're a lock for a wild card. Just having the Jets and Giants alone and Jacksonville takes them to eight wins right now. They're a lock. So you're going to have Pittsburgh, Ravens, and the Browns from the AFC North in the playoffs. That leaves only one wild card spot left. And with one wild card spot left, you know, now you're looking at Miami, Indianapolis, and the Raiders, I think, fighting for one spot. 
You can write off the rest of the team. You can write off the Patriots because they're done. The Jets, are, as we know, are done. You can write off Cincinnati's done. You can write off the Chargers. You can write off the Broncos. They're done. You know, Houston's done. You can write off a lot of these teams. They're just done. Jacksonville's done. So it's Indianapolis, Miami, and the Raiders. Now, the Raiders' schedule is the easiest of the bunch. Look at the schedule the rest of the way. Um, after today, Browns game, once again, toss-up game with the Browns. Got to root for the Browns if you're a Dolphins fan. Toss-up game. You have the Chargers. You have the Broncos. Win-win. Atlanta's a win. The Jets are a win. Um, Chargers again is a win. Denver's a win. Miami, once again, will be a big game. Toss-up game late in the year. And, and then they also play the Colts. The Raiders control their own destiny and have an easy schedule. The Raiders could very easily sneak into that seventh wild card spot. Miami's goal of it is going to be a little bit more of a challenge than the Raiders. Yes, Miami does have the Jets. Yes, Miami does have Cincinnati and the Broncos. But Miami also has more challenging games. They have, obviously, the Raiders, like I said. They have, um, they have who else do they have? They have the Chiefs. They have the Bills again. So, you know, Miami's got a little, and then you got the Colts. The Colts got a pretty rough schedule, actually. They still have to play the, they still have to play the Ravens, the Titans, the Packers, the Titans again. Um, they have to play the Raiders, like I said. Ravens, Titans, Packers are the next three. Um, and then Titans again. Then you still have to throw in Pittsburgh and the Raiders. So the Colts schedule is a little bit more of a challenge. I think Miami to make that seventh wild card spot um, is really it's down to them and the Raiders. So you got to start rooting against the Raiders here, um, and, and you got to root for Miami to win. I think if Miami wins today at four and three, they're going to be in a dogfight for the final playoff spot. I think they'll be in a dogfight with the Raiders, and they have to play the Raiders thankfully week sixteen. So that's gonna that's a good thing, but also, you know. The AFC East, it's not out of the question. I just think the Bills, they're just, they already beat Miami once in Miami. There's a cut above. But that's going to be the challenge here moving forward for the Miami Dolphins is, you know, what happens. So we'll see I'm, uh, We'll see about that. Let me see if there's any more things I want to talk about here. How long have we been going? Well, not about 20 minutes. Um, two what we talked about. Going to be interesting. Today's game, you know, it. Once again on Tua, it's just, you know, you only get one chance to make a first impression. And that's why today's game is so big. One chance to make a first impression. Hopefully all things go well. And he has a solid performance. Like I said, for those of you who might have joined a little bit late, I think it's going to go really, really good or really, really bad. There's going to be no middle ground. So we'll see here when it's all said and done. It's a huge game. I think Miami will win today. I know a lot of people are picking the Rams, which I understand. The Rams are a good team. Rams are an up-and-down team. Some weeks they look unbeatable. Some weeks they look brutal. So it's going to be an up-and-down type of game. I think Miami will win a close one. I think Tua is going to pull it out in the end. I, you know, That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I think will happen. I just don't think the Rams... I just think the way Miami played heading into the bye those past few games, I know they weren't against some of the best teams in the league. San Francisco, we happen to catch them on an off week. And then obviously the Jets are the Jets. Heading into this game, I think Miami is coming off um, two solid wins. Had a week off to rest and get healthy, which was huge. And the Rams are kind of up and down. So we'll see. It's going to be interesting. And, you know, right now for, we're about uh, two hours away from kickoff. If you want to hear more about this game, Tom and Dante Colinelli uh, did a pregame show. It's up on our website, DolphinsTalk.com. Go check that out. Uh, we'll have the postgame wrap-up show after the game with myself and Tom, breaking down the entire game start to finish. you want to check that out. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, just go to the website, DolphinsTalk.com. we got a ton of new videos. we got a ton of new audio up on the website you're going to want to check out. Um, so go ahead there. Get ready for the game today. We're about two hours away from kickoff. And also, during the game, if you want to interact with me, I will be on Twitter. Be sure you're following us and me on Twitter at Dolphins Talk to check that out as well. So I think I'm going to end this now. We went, you know, about 25 minutes or so and covered a lot. But it's two a day, folks, and that's what everyone's been waiting for. Let's hope for the best. Let's really hope for the best. And I'll talk to everyone after a while.